Hi, and welcome to another desktop tutorial video. In this video, we will be looking at the DDES cable block diagrams. To start off, I have opened the diagrams module and we will be working under the cable block diagram section. I'm going to create a new cable block diagram and I will call it, maybe in this case, 20BLK01. I can give it a description as well, uh, maybe my first cable block. I'm going to leave the file name as is. I can fill in the area and the drawing name and client drawing name I can change as well. Okay, but for now I'm just going to click OK and I'm going to open up this cable block diagram. Now the layout of the new cable block diagram is as follows. On the left hand side I have my tag numbers and I can select from which table I work On the right hand side I have my symbol libraries, my layers and my property section and then in the middle I have my drawing environment and on top I have my menu and my different ribbon bars. To start off, I'm going to select an existing drawing as my template. Now we can go and use the drawing tools. I recommend that you familiarize yourself with these drawing tools. Um, but what we are going to do is we're going to import an existing AutoCAD template. I'm going to choose this landscape A3 one of mine and I'm going to clear the drawing area. I don't have anything in there yet, so it's not going to make a difference. With the drawing imported, there are a couple of blocks that were on the template. And I'm not going to use these. Now just to quickly show you, if I click on insert block, these are all the blocks that were pulled in from the template. I'm going to click on remove unused blocks so that it clears all the existing blocks. Now as I said we can go and design a template from scratch. Later on we can go and we can also save this as either an existing DRWG file or a AutoCAD DWG file. When you start drawing, you'll notice that under your symbol libraries that you won't have any symbol libraries yet. There also are no current symbol libraries that we provide yet as this project is still in beta. While we are on that subject, seeing that it is in beta, it's likely that here and there you will find functionality that does not work. We would like to encourage you to report anything that does not work before we start using the symbol libraries, I'm firstly just going to explain how blocks work. So I'm going to start off by just drawing a simple block. Let's add lines in there. Let me zoom in slightly. And you'll notice that, for example, that's not on the line so I can move it. Now maybe I would like to change my grid settings so I'm going to click on view and then under the grid and snap I'm going to click on settings here. I'm going to change my snap to 10 and my grid step there to 10 as well. Now if I draw a line and I did not select a point on the grid itself, you'll notice that it will float here in the middle of nowhere. I can go and I can actually click on the resize point and I can move it to the grid. Now the grid that I selected is actually a bit too big. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to select a smaller grid to work off. So once again, I will click on view 
settings and I'll change that then to a more relevant size maybe 2.5 and 2.5 I'd like to add some text in here as well so I'll start off by clicking on text selecting my base point my height also the angle of the text now the text is currently a bit too big and it's also not aligned correctly so I'm going to select it going to properties then select under alignment maybe middle center and maybe change my text type there to 2 then I can go add lay, say another line and I'm going to select all my objects and what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a block now when you do create a block make sure that you select a base point that is not touching one of the lines or text object or any other object that you've added in there currently if I do select it it will be only the line that is created into that object so what I'd like to do is I'd like to select a base point just off or maybe in the center of my object notice that it changes the base point over here I'm going to give it a block name so let's call this my test block and I'll click OK now I'd like to insert this block I've just created so I'll select it I'll select where I want the base point to be and I'll click OK I can go and move this now just make sure that you do move it to the grid that it does look a bit more neat now this is not a symbol that we want to use even though we can import the blocks if I go and I associate a tag number to a block you'll notice that it will update all the blocks Now that's not really what we want to do so what I'm going to do is I'm firstly going to select this other block I'm going to go to cable connect and I'm going to unlink the component notice that both of them unlink what I want to do is actually just go and add the symbol to a symbol library now to do that I'm going to click on symbol libraries I'm going to create a new library by clicking on the plus there let's call it my test library you can really call it anything you want I'm going to click OK now you'll notice that test library is in my list and I'm going to go now under home with the block selected it must be a block I'm going to click on add to library and let's call it my test symbol 1 as soon as I do that you should see it appear in that test library of yours now of course we'd like to go and create a couple more symbols so I'm going to do that quickly in the meantime but before we do that we're going to add anchors because we would like to connect our symbol to each other so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to box select these symbols and I'm going to delete them off the page by pressing delete now I'm going to select my symbol and I'm going to left click and drag it onto the page now if my grid is still the same then it should be easy to align my symbol to the grid now I'm going to click on cable connect now and I'm going to add anchor points to the symbol firstly let's say over there and there now I'm going to select my object again 
so I want to delete this test symbol from my library and I am going to add the current symbol let's say as basic now I'm going to add a couple more symbols in there in the meantime and then we'll start off by creating maybe a bit better cable block diagram than just the basic symbol that I'm using now okay so I've created a couple of symbols for us one thing that you'll notice is that the text that I use some of them refer to the field name in the table itself and some of them are actually the token now if you do add your symbols and you find that you just can't get your symbol aligned to your grid just delete it from the page and add it again now, the first time that you add it select it and then on this point over here go and drag that to the specific place you want it on your grid if you use this control over here for the first time it will go and align it nicely to it okay now you can actually go and refer to the address so for example my channels and my instrument tag numbers in there you can also go and even refer to the terminal level just know that it refers to the order of the terminal strip so for the conventional loop case I'll have to have multiple symbols to actually have this working in that type of fashion now to link an instrument to one of these symbols I'll make sure that I select instruments and then I'll just drag and drop my tags onto the symbols. I can do that for my panels as well. I can even go onto my card detail and you'll we'll see that it even goes and shows me which channels I have and which instruments are associated to those channels. Okay, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to connect my instruments to my junction box over here. So I'll go to Cable Connect, select the Connect Cables button there, and I'll hover my cursor over this anchor point over here. Click and click the next one, and that connection will be made. Now for the next one, if I select the cursor there, and I select on the cursor there, then you'll see that the line will go directly from the one point to the other now what I'd like to do is I'd like to add additional points in there so I'm going to select the select button there I'm going to click on my line and I'm going to press control while clicking on the line that will add another point in there for us from which we can go now and add our points where we want them now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to cables I'm going to select my FT's cable and I'm going to drop it on this cable line there now you'll notice that the tag pulls in there what we're going to do now is under our symbols we can go we can select the type of symbol we want to use for our cable I'm going to drop it on there and it will associate it for us now if you want to you can always select the line and you can disconnect that cable when you do your cable connections just make sure that you do go from the source to the destination so that type of functionality is still in there but it's still your responsibility to make sure that the data is correct if I were to go from the destination to the source then of course my cable schedule will show 
that it goes from the junction box to the instrument. Remember we work from the instrumentation all the way up to the card. Now the software is still in beta even though we are working hard to get this release out there are still a couple of bugs in it so we do ask that if you do find any bugs in the software please report it to support once again make sure that you save often and we trust that you have a productive session with the new DDS module thank you for watching this desktop tutorial video we trust it was informative